On your left. All right, my more brothers. Um, I kind of didn't want to weigh in on this, but people ask you about it. So here goes nothing. Just talking about the DJ Academics, Fresh and Fit, and Ridley Renner podcast, which for the most part, I, I listened to most of the podcast. I didn't listen to the whole thing. I think I listened to about maybe a little over an hour. And um, it's pretty much what I thought it was. I think it's a, cl- a little bit of a class mismatch because Brittany Renner is 100 octane. You know, that's that's the guys uh, at the level that she dated at. And did she, did she actually lock one of those guys down completely? But that doesn't always happen with 100 octane. And she's getting close to 30. And um, she tried to follow the script. She tried to follow the script. Uh, and it didn't come out to her liking. At the end of the day, maybe she doesn't want to, at this stage of the game, she doesn't want to live at that level. So she's going to have to come down a little bit but we'll get into that my assessment of this particular podcast is this is something that i don't think she really wanted to do this interview uh really i don't think she wanted to do the interview at all evidently this is something that fresh uh wanted and she he had probably asked her to come on to the show and it didn't work out because you know because she i think she said it at the very beginning she she thought they were beneath her and maybe the and maybe they are. Maybe they are beneath her. She's 100 octane and they're basically unknown for the most part. Like she even said it. You've only been around a year and a half. Your podcast is new. Your setup is still developing. And she did this tour of YouTube for a reason, right? She said she wanted to hit the top five because she felt that she was worth that. You know, she, she talked about DJ Academics. She talked about uh, the No Jumper podcast. She talked about Kevin Samuels. She wanted to do Joe Budden, but I guess she couldn't get Joe Budden to do it. But she said she wanted to hit the top five uh, YouTubers in this sector, in this realm. And uh, Fresh and Fit didn't fit into that. So, you know, Myron is pretty good at not necessarily calling in favors, but actually using his relationship. So he used his relationship with DJ Academics, who is has a, if, you know, by uh, Brittany Renner's own words, DJ Academics is basically i guess a friend to her because uh i guess after the podcast they really formed a friendship and so dj academics basically called in a marker okay i helped you out we're on pretty good terms why don't you come do this podcast you know fresh and fish wants to do a podcast and i'm going to vouch for him so i'm going to bring you two together on my show it won't be on theirs going to be on my show and just want you to show up and pretty much started out where you know i'm only here basically because my friend asked me to be on this podcast and i'm doing him a favor and i really don't give a shit about you guys because you guys to me are you know beneath me and she kind of made that clear at the very beginning and that's how come you hear the antagonism between myron and her because she threw the first shot you know i'm listening to the beginning she threw she threw the first shot she threw the uh, uh she, she threw the in the class card against myron and uh, and fresh and so for the I say for the first half hour it was a little bit contentious. That's when DJ Academics had to come in and kind of soften things up and kind of bring the two sides together. And I think for the last hour or so toward the end of the show, I think they kind of agreed on a lot of things because they weren't that far apart because Fresh and Fit do deal with, with IG models like like Brittany on a regular basis. They they're probably not at her scale, but they do deal with them. And it came to the point where they actually saw eye to eye on a lot of things. So it's not as contentious as people want to make it out. It's not who won. Okay. If you really want to be honest, they both won. Okay. Fresh and fit got their name out there. They got her name attached to Brittany Renner. They they opened up a whole new market. And at the end of the day, Brittany Renner got to do what she wanted to do. Which basically is to tell her side of the story and kind of rebrand her image. That was the whole thing about it. She didn't think that these guys were going to be worth it as far as what she wanted to do, what she wanted out of the deal, actually doing, uh, lending her name and lending her fame to a podcast. 
So on the strength of, of her friendship with DJ Academics, that's like it's always good to have a non-sexual relationship with 100 Octane. They can do things for you that you couldn't can't do for yourself. So he did his boys a solid by arranging this meetup, this interview, which Britney didn't want to do, and made it happen. And by the same token, he kind of softened the antagonism that was going on between them. <laughs> And so that Brittany could actually tell her story and get a sympathetic ear. And at the at the very end of the podcast, the guys, all the guys, you know, Fresh and Myron were actually sympathetic to Brittany. Because at the end of the podcast, if you actually listened to it, they were saying, hey, you know what? OK, you should have known what you signed up for. Any guy at, at, that's going to be with you at that level and you know what your level is, you're going to have to accept that they're going to exercise their options. And you got to be good with that. And so rather than doing it with other people that outside of you, the father of your child, you should go ahead and try to make it work with the father of your child. Get your Aisha Curry on and just, you know, look the other way, which is actually good advice, which is which is advice that I've given. If you're going to be up there as far as 100 octane, Kevin's given, they're given. So that's pretty standard across the red pill space or the manosphere now. And Brittany thought because he was younger and she could mold him that that wouldn't happen. Surprise. <laughs> OK, it ain't the case. OK, he's up there. He's got the, he's got the, the swag. He's got the attention. He's got the clout. He's going to exercise his options. And there's very little that you can do to stop him. As you try to do, it's not going to work. But as they say, she should actually work, actually work it out with PJ because that is the best option for him if he's willing to take her as his wife and and his household. And when he's out on the road, he's got to got to look the other way. OK, it is what it is. So as far as who won, who versus who, who won, I think they both got what they wanted. Brittany got a, another chance to actually uh, reshape her image. And I think she she kind of did. You know, when I'm listening to it, do I completely trust her? Probably not. But I can understand that you know, she thought that the guy wasn't going to cheat. She thought she had. A young one that she molded that was was going to be completely faithful to her. And uh, in the NBA, in the, in the life, probably not an option. If what she's saying is completely true, we're assuming. But I just wanted to give my little spin on it because after about the first half hour, it's pretty much, I pretty much figured out it was, it's media. And that's the way it was actually sold. You know, shout out to him. He's probably going to get like a million views on you know, the podcast, you know, another million, a half a million views each on the videos as he chops them up. And that's the way you do it. And if you're going to have a name like Brittany Renner there, the, a lightning rod, you might as well use the lightning rod, charge up your, your appliances, right? Charge up your batteries, track the lightning, charge up your batteries, make it work for you. So, like I said, at the end of the day, I think all three of them got what they wanted. Uh, she got, uh, she won them over for the sympathetic year. Okay. She kind of played the damsel in distress and basically they, you know, they they got off their horses and they, they threw down their capes in a sense. Even though even though the capes are, are red pill, they gave her some red pill truth. They almost tried to not be fathers, but brothers, you know, with their advice. So I think DJ Academic said it like maybe midway through the, through the podcast. I guess you guys thought this was going to be adversarial and it's not as adversarial as you think it is because... For the most part, even though she doesn't like what they said sometimes, but things she agrees. It is what it is. And they saw her side of it. They were sympathetic to it. So it is what it is. So when I first heard it, when I first heard a few seconds, it's OK. I, I know what this is and I know what he's trying to do. And basically it worked out. They, they, they talked long enough to where they actually started, actually really understood each other. And Brittany got, you know, got one more brick in the wall trying to actually reform or reshape her her public image because she, she got to make money probably gonna write another book she might even start a podcast but she can't do it if she's thought of as this heartless gold digger got to reshape that image uh, dj's gonna make some some coins off of doing this uh podcast and the fresh and fit's gonna get more viewers i mean i could actually go in and point out certain things that, that stood out to me like you know the, the thing the the off phrase uh, that's been repeated is that uh, you're nothing special, right? Which is not true. The reason that you wanted to have her on is because she she's a name and she is special. She, she is 100 octane. She does have fame. She does have clout. 
She does have a name. She can attract people just by her name, which is why you got it. So she is special, which would fit Myron was saying that, that you're just like any other girl. No, she's not. And she could have dumped on them, but she didn't because she's trying to clean up her image. She's not trying to be the uh, the uh, tragic mulatto from uh, Mississippi that, that's been hurt and has this uh, wrecked family life and takes it out on people. She doesn't want that image. She wants a softer, kinder Brittany that jumped into uh, having a baby with a guy that she loved and it didn't work out. So in that case, I think that she wooed them over. I think she wooed over DJ Academics. Now, it could be that uh, she's that skilled or it could be that she's been mischaracterized. Which I can see that in in the NBA and the life, okay, you're gonna get clowned, okay, you can get clowned, and sometimes you gotta, in publicly, gotta show that bravado so that your rep, your rep on the court uh, doesn't get hurt. So I, I think that's what PJ did or may have done because we don't know, we never know. Well, all we can is do is go by the receipt, but uh, it's not as one sided as Brittany would like to paint it. I can tell you that. But you guys are gonna have to go uh, watch the whole podcast. Or at least most of the good part of it, because I kind of sat through it. And after you know, a while, it got to be redundant because it's just uh, regurgitated uh, red pill talking points we talk about all the time, which I have to give fresh and fit credit. They do uh, reiterate it. They do preach the word. And like I said, uh, you know, if, before I listened to the whole podcast, I probably would have done a very different, different one. You know, the first I would say first 30 minutes were, were kind of adversarial and, and DJ Academics as a good host. He actually smoothed things out. You got things pushed along and, and actually reverse what people thought. So basically, uh, fresh and fit, we actually kind of reverse, not completely reverse, but kind of change the way they saw her, a, a pretty much the way uh, DJ Academics changed the way he saw her. So in that sense, he was successful, or she was successful. And maybe, you know, like I said, maybe Cousin Tita will do one about this, because he actually did one earlier about her and uh, DJ Academics. I still say that Kevin, well, not if Kevin had gotten the most out of her, but at least this time we actually found out why she left because she, she really wasn't forthcoming about why she left. She actually said that he he was doing his due out there on the road and he had his side chicks and she was pissed off and and she you know she thought that he was he was trained and wouldn't drift and he did. So even though uh, she had the the allowance in the car. She said that wasn't enough, which Myron and and, uh, and Fresh are saying, hey, you need to go back and get that dude and, and chill out about that cheating. Because any dude you meet at this level, he's going to have options and he's probably going to exercise. So I think that actually sunk through. So like I said, this is uh, started out as adversarial, started out as a class mismatch. And uh, shout out to DJ Academics. He actually pulled this one off to where they actually came together, agreed and actually gave each other some really good advice. So, but that's just my two cents. You can actually go look at it, the whole podcast yourself and actually make your own evaluation. I could break it down further, but you know, yeah, I may, I may do it. I may, if I do it, I may do it for the patrons. I may just go ahead and break down the whole, um, the whole video with, with commentary. Cause I think damn things like damn near two hours long. So Jesus Christ, can you guys wrap it up in like 45? But <laughs> it is what it is. Anywho. With that, I'm going to jump off here. This is BGS Out, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.